we're going to look at three topics. We'll start with uh, descriptive statistics. Then we'll go to some probability and probability distributions. Okay, so some of the questions will just explain the principle rather than calculating it. All right, question number one. This is also from the distance uh, test paper. So we've been given 20 observations in this question. We're asked to calculate the sample mean, the standard deviation, the median, and the interquartile range. How many marks are these? This is nine marks. Now, how do we calculate this? To start with, how do we calculate the formula of our sample mean? So sample mean given by a summation of x over n. The sample variance is given by summation of x squared and a summation of x to the power 2 over n, everything over n minus 1. The standard deviation is simply the square root of what? Our variance. The coefficient of variation is simply standard deviation over the square root of n. Okay, these are measures of central tendency. Our range is simply given by what? The maximum value of x, the highest value of x, minus the lowest value of x. So I expect you to answer this question on your own. Let me just use our my simple figures so that I move fast. Three, four, six, six, nine. Um, 10 and 20. So can somebody help me? Help me identify the measures of. So this is already arranged. How do we find the range? I need everyone to participate. How do you find the range? The range is simply the highest value. And that's what? The minimum value of X. So our highest value is 20 and our smallest value is three. So the range is 70. How do we find the mod? The mod is simply the number that appears the most, which is six. So we have three quartiles here. We have quartile one, quartile two, and quartile three. Quartile one is called the lower quarter, quarter two is called the second quarter or the median, quarter three is called the upper quarter. So how do you find the lower quarter? It is a quarter of N. How do you find the median? It is half of N. How do you find the upper quarter? It's three quarters of N. So the rule here is if you find the whole number, you maintain the whole number and add the subsequent, the, 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 the subsequent number and you divide by two. So in this case, how many? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So our n is seven. So what is the quarter of seven? What is the quarter of seven? Like I said, you help me by quickly uh, um, calculating those figures. This class is mainly meant for the BIDs. We call them broad in date, those that are really behind. So before I start probability, let me not make you feel behind by listing what you already know. So 1.75. So you, each time you have a point, you round up. So this is the second figure. The second value 
for the second position. What is our second position here? Four. That is our first quarter. Our second quarter is half of what? Seven. Whenever we're at this decimal point, we round up. Whether it was 3.2 or 3.1 or 3.9, as long as there's a decimal point, we round up. So the fourth number here is what? One, two. You can number them if you want. So we have position one, position two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So the fourth position here is what? Six. All right, so we go to our upper quarter, which is three quarters of seven. What is three quarters of seven? 0.75 times seven, you get 5.25. Whenever I have a decimal point, what do we do? We round up. Round up. So the round up. position is what? 10. Any questions in finding the quartiles? So Mali, Q1 is called the first quarter or the lower quarter. Q2 is the second quarter or the median. Q3 is called our third quarter or upper quarter. The difference between the first quarter and the third quarter is called the interquartal range. So our interquartal range is Q3 minus Q1. So in this case, we're going to get 10 minus four, which is six. So six is called our interquartal range. So this will help us come up with a polygon, which we call the box whisker plot, which has five key parameters. Number one, it has the minimum value of X. Number two, it has the maximum value of X. Number three, it has the first quarter, second quarter, and third quarter. The minimum value was three, the maximum value was 20. So we have four, six, 10 as the quartiles. So four, six, and 10. The bigger distance gives you the shape of the skewness. To be skewed is to be, this is skewed to the right, it is bending. To skew is to bend, this is skewed to the left. So you can tell from here which one is bigger. The distance here is four, the distance here is what, two. So you pick the larger side. So this is skewed to the right. So this shape can tell you how the polygon looks like. So is it to the right or the left? It is the right because the bigger difference is on the right. So there's a bigger difference here. Uh, okay, so uh, maybe my, just, just there, I think uh, there's a, there's a mixed up somewhere. Mm -hmm. So like during during classes, mm -hmm. I remember Doc Doc uh, drew the, the 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 person there standing to say uh, like your right has to be has to be on the other side, and then the left has to be on the other side. I don't know. Okay, so I'll use the other method as well, just to verify where there's a formula for skewness, but from the diagram, you okay. can also tell. So interquartal range is the difference between the upper quarter and the lower quarter. So we found our interquartal range as six. Then you apply 1.5 times the interquartal range. What do we get? 1.5 times the interquartal range, we get a nine. So this nine, you add it on the upper quarter and you subtract it on the lower quarter. So nine plus 10, we get 19. Four minus nine, we get negative five. So the range, negative five comma 19. 
is able to identify which one is your outlier. It's like you put a rule here. Any numbers are outside this rule is called an outlier. The three is inside, it's called the five, but the 20 is outside this rule somewhere here. So we call the 20 as what? An outlier. Any questions at this point? I just wanted to comment on the on, on the thinness of the data. I did I did uh, where in fact we are told to say we need to for example the way this one is is supposed to be the opposite of our position position. If you draw a human being as, as the area only was stated, our left will be their right, and our right will be their left. So in this case, this data is good to the left and not to the right. The right to the left. That's okay. What I to All right. Okay. Thanks for that. I will. You can alternatively use this formula, which is the coefficient of skewness using the parameters we're going to calculate, all right? So we've already calculated our median as what? Six. And how do we calculate the mean? By summing these up. Okay, so we have values of x and values of x squared. So let's find the values of uh, x and x squared quickly. Yeah, okay, I'm sorry to take you back. Mm -hmm. I missed uh, what uh, the point, how you quit, where you, yeah, adding, well, adding a uh nine to ten to make it nineteen and uh subtracting uh is it um how we got the negative five is that all right so to identify the outlier there's a formula that we use which is one point five IQR and we add one point five to the upper quarter. So you understand how we got there in the quarter range, 10 minus four, which is six. Then you multiply this six yes. times 1.5 to get nine. So we need to find what we call the lower limit and the upper limit. So to find the lower limit, this nine, it is 1.5 by QR, we subtract it, the Q1 minus nine. So four minus nine brings us to what? negative five, that is the point there. Then the upper limit, we add <clears throat> the 10 here, plus nine, we get 19. That is where the 19 is. If you find any values outside this range, they're called outliers. So our lower limit is negative five, our upper limit is positive 19. So only 20 is outside this. So 20 becomes an outlier. Is that clear? All right. Thank you. Yes. Any questions at this point? All right. So we want to learn now how to find what? Our values of x, the mean. So we had 34, 66. 19, 34, 66, 34, 66, 9, 10, and 20. So these are values of x. And when you square them, this is 9, 16, 36, 36, 81, 
hundred and what? Four hundred. So when you add this, it's called summation of x. When you add this, it's called summation of x squared. So let's add up quickly. The values of x is adding up to 58. Adding up, yes, adding up the values of x, what are you getting? 58. 58, then x squared. Nine plus sixteen plus sixteen plus sixteen plus hundred plus four hundred. What are you getting? Six seventy eight. Six seventy eight. Our, our n is what? Seven. Who can help us find the formula of the mean? How do we find the mean? Uh, it's summation of uh, x divided by n. Summation of x divided by n. So 20 plus 7. How do we get? Two point uh, eight. Two point eight. What? Six. Leave it to three decimal places. So. Two point eight. Two point eight five seven. Why are we dividing twenty divided by seven? Why are we dividing 20 by seven? That's the formula for the mean. Mean, you... Uh, but the solution of x is not 20. No. Yeah, that's 58, yes. exactly. Yes. Okay. So what do we get? 8.28. Excellent. And how do we find the variance? Summation of squared and as uh, summation of x to the power two over n, everything over n minus one. The audio is gone, is it my network? It's gone, I can't hear. So with the formula that has been given here, summation of x squared minus summation of x to the power two over n, everything over n minus one. So don't confuse this x squared and this x or squared. So this one is a bigger value. 6, 7, 8, then 58 squared over 7, then everything over n minus 1. So if um, 
it has no n minus one, it becomes the population what? Population variance. So when you subtract that, what are you getting? For 80.57. So we divide that and compute, we're going to get that's two point what? That's two point nine zero five. This is what we call our variance. So I first started by squaring that divided by seven, I get four eight. Seven minus one is six. Subtract the top part divided by six, we get thirty two point nine zero five. Then the standard deviation is the square root of the 2.905, what do we get? What is the square root of the 2.905? Uh, 5.73. 5.73. Seven. All right. So how do we find the coefficient of uh, variation? Standard deviation over the mean times 100. How do we find the coefficient of skewness? Three mean minus median over our standard deviation. So our standard deviation we just found is five point what? Five point seven three six over the mean, which was what? Eight point two eight six. Okay. Five point what? Seven three six. The mean is eight point two eight six. So we can leave it as a percentage. So it's the uh, nine point. Pardon? 69.80%. No, 225. 69.225, is that what the rest are getting? Yes. 225%. Okay. Then to find our skewness, we have our mean 8.286 minus our standard deviation is what? 5.736. And our median. What is our median? Our median was six. So six here. So when you compute that. If you get a positive, it is skewed to the right. If you get a negative, it's skewed to the left. What are you getting? So we have found 1.19. 1.196. So the answer is positive. So what is our comment? It's Q to the right. Which studies with 
the conclusion which we made earlier on. I don't know how he taught what um, we were mentioning, but according to uh, my simple uh, study, this is how it's supposed to be. All right, so I've tried to explain on ungrouped data how to find those parameters. Let me go to probability. If there are any questions, please ask before I proceed. Let me just see the, the, the formula for the median. Median is a second quartile. So this is a median. Oh, oh yeah, okay. We go to the probability. Probability of any event happening A is into the number of A elements divided by the sum total of events. The complement of A is simply one minus A. So probability of A, when you add its complement, you should add up to what? One. You go to Bayes' theorem. Bayes' theorem simply states that A given B, you bring down this guy here, a bit of B. And on top we have A intersection B. So this one, you can expand it by cross multiplying. So at A given B, if you multiply it by its, the B itself, we're going to get the intersection of A and B. Unite is to add A union B is simply the probability of A. You add the probability of B and you subtract the intersection of A and B. If you're given the probability of B given A, who wants to expand this for us using base theory? What letter comes down? Oh. What do we have on top? A intersection B. If you want, you can put B intersection A. It's the same, just like two times three is the same as three times two. But two divided by three is not the same as three divided by two. That's why it's very important. You start by locating E there punch. So this one, if you expand it to be B given A, and you multiply it by the probability of A, you're going to get an intersection. So when this common letters kiss, intersection will come in. So these letters are the same. So even whilst your eyes are closed, you could still know if I have X there, I'm going to get X intersection Y. I need to multiply that one by y given x because these two guys are the same. We have conditions. Three conditions. Number one. Sorry, sir. So can you just take your screen a bit back? Yes, please. Yes, I I didn't finish copying that one. So she's still copying. 
probability is a killer topic. You can't guess if you don't know the axioms of probability. These give birth to the entire probability. There are these rules of addition, subtraction, multiplying, but I'm summarizing all these in the simplest possible manner. All right, thank you, I'm done. All right. So if this one goes down, we're going to have a bit of B. And we have an intersection here. This we already know. But for this one to be independent, A given B must be what? what? A bit of A. To be independent is to be unaffected by, even if I put Z there, it should be A. A bit of A given D, for them to be independent, this is still A. You maintain the top I. So this is where independence hold. A given B, which is expanded as that, must be what what? Probability of what? A. So another, if you want to expand that, to know that it is independent, A intersection B must be equal to, when you apply the probability of A times the probability of B, the same thing. When these events are multiplied, you get the intersection of A. This is only when they're independent. If they're mutually exclusive, the rule is that you have nothing in common. A intersection B must be equal to what? Zero or empty set. Independent events are independents that have no common ground. If you're dating and you're always fighting, just tell him or her, you and I, mutually, uh, mutually exclusive, nothing in common, don't intersect. Am I clear? Is this making sense? Yes. All right. People perished because of what? Lack of knowledge. So A, if we're going to use a rule, which is called theorem two, is simply going to be a bit of A, Intersection B plus probability of A, intersection B, complement will be on the other letter, B. If we have B, we're simply going to have A, intersection B plus A, intersection B. But since subject of the formula is B, put on the other letter here. But what is the catch? What's the secret? I don't want to memorize all this. Just look at the common letter. Here, the letter which is common is A. Here, the letter which is common is B. Suppose I had A intersection D plus B intersection D plus C intersection D. We pick the common letter, which is what? Probability of D. That is where the catch is. Okay. Can somebody help me expand this? So that's the probability of A intersection B. Probability of B complement. And on top? A intersection B. 
We're looking at the complement. Com complement. And we know that B complement is the same as what? One minus a bit of B. Yes, Guru Mario, if I please tell your brain to understand and assimilate. Two weeks before the exams, when I come, bring for your heads as well. So that is a spirit of forgetfulness, please, at that time, it's critical. Don't forget. Collins, please go back to the previous um, slide. All right. That's a minute. So this is theorem what? Theorem two. The prostitute formula is the intersection. So this intersection here, we can make it subject to be A intersection B is equal to a bit of A minus A intersection B, but the complement on the other end. Or A intersection B can be made subject. If we have a B here, we simply subtract the intersection with a complement on the other letter, which is by other letter. I'm saying if this is A without the complement, B must have the complement. If this is B, A must have the complement. This is also theorem two. So intersection has about five formulas. You need to know when to use them. If events are independent, just multiply them. A, then to a bit of B. We're going to get the intersection of A, intersection B. Now, Papa, don't rush to this formula. It's very dangerous. You only use it when you're given A and B. For instance, if A is 0 0.2, B is 0 0.3, and there's no conditional probability, just multiply them. That is called theory of what? One. I also mentioned to say A union B is equal to a bit of A plus a bit of B minus what? The intersection. So I'm interested in the intersection. We just swap positions. So what becomes the formula for the intersection? A intersection B will simply be a bit of A plus a bit of B minus A union. So I said union is the same as the word O we are adding. Intersection is the same as the word and multiplying. So this is the key we use in probability. Need to take note of that. Sorry, Mr. Collins, did you send this pamphlet? Yeah, I'll resend it. So we're given an insurer All right, okay. that offers two types of policies. We have home and car insurance. At 7% of all customers have home insurance. 96 of all customers have car insurance. Every customer has at least one of the two types. So let's summarize the data here. All right. So what's a, what is this 80 to 70%? For a bit of what? Home insurance. Zero point what? 
eight seven. Okay, what is this? Kind insurance zero point what? Zero point nine six. Then every customer has at least one. So H union C, and you when you add them, is equal to one. So what is the probability that it does not have a kind insurance? What are they looking for? The complement. So it's actually asking us to find the complement of the car insurance. So car insurance is one minus probability of the car. So the complement of the car is what? Four percent, which is zero point zero four. So that's a probability that he does not have a car. How about he has a car insurance and home insurance? What are they looking for? The intersection. Good, and means intersection. Car, intersection, home. Using the union formula. A bit of A, a bit of H, minus intersection. We already have the intersection, so here we're going to do minus A union. C, union H. If this statement was not there, we would have simply multiplied H and C, because we know that independent events, the intersection, you multiply them. So here we have 0 0.87 plus 0 0.96 minus 1. What do we get? What are you getting there? Quickly calculate. 0 0.83. 0 0.83. 0 0.83. Do we agree? Before we why are we obsessed to the union? Why aren't we saying minus the intersection? Why are we? I explained here. To, I, I explained here to say A union B is equal to a bit of A plus a bit of B minus what? The intersection of A and B. This is a formula we know. But if you're not given, we're given this into that, just use the row of this one comes inside to be a positive A intersection B. Is go to A plus B. Now this guy will come this side. So to subtract minus A union B. So we have adopted this formula here. Is that clear? Clear, Mr. Collins. So where is this one coming from? In the statement to say at least each one has one of the two. So meaning home plus a car insurance, the total must be 100%. That is where the union is coming from. So who wants to try part three as home insurance given car insurance? So that's a condition of probability. Mm -hmm. Probability of uh, home good. intersection C, probability of C. Yes, home intersection C. So what is the home intersection C? It's 0.83. That's a probability of C. 
zero point nine six. And what is the final answer? Zero point eight six. Zero point eight six. Any questions this far? All right. Who wants to give us a notation? Does not have a car insurance given here as home insurance. Sorry, come again. What is the notation? Of... Okay. Yeah, so that one we are saying uh, uh, C, C, C complement. Yes. C, C complement. Even H. So, I'm going to complement to some adjustment theorem to us to come. Excellent. Mm. C complement given H. So we can go down. A bit of Ability of C. What do we have on top? Probability of C complement intersection H. Then this one we can expand it. And the complement is inside. It's the same as what? Probability of what? So look, we need to have to do a try and error. We only have H and what? See if you want. This is for the BIDs. So you need to know which one of the two will be relevant. So if there's C there, complement will be on H. If there's H there, the complement will be on which letter? Which letter? On C. On C. So which one is relevant to us? It is this one here. Okay. So we make this one subject of formula because we want to place it there. So when this one goes aside, it will be a bit of H minus what? A bit of C intersection H should give us the probability of what? C complement intersection H. So we manipulate. So instead of putting that, we're going to put probability of H minus probability of C intersection H over, we bring this one as it is, probability of H. Because we don't have this guy here. So we cannot or never solve this one. So probability of H we have, what is probability of H? 0.87. The intersection, 8.3. And H, 8, 7 again. So 0 0.87 minus 0 0.83 over 0 0.87. There are certain questions that are in that we're solving. A bit is tricky. Even mean I need to read more because some probability is just confusing. So that is what you it carried the more marks this one because of its complexity. So what do you think? Uh, zero point zero four five. Yes. So this is the probability of C complement given H. I solved the question you did in class using a different method, but I'll not look at it now. Mm, which one is that the base, using the base here? Yes, using the base. The one we did. Yes, because... For me, that one is really confusing. 
Yeah, I sent the video. I hope you follow through that one because I simplified it. Yes, Let me try to look yes, at the, um, the assignment. But there's some probability there. Let's check through. Um, the assignment. Just a bit, sir. The last page I'm not. Is there still copying? We can move on. Thank you. Okay, so now we can go to random variables. Random variables. Random variables. Go under what we call discrete. So discrete uh, variables. We have two types of discrete variables. We have what we call we have two types of random variables is discrete and continuous. So here basically we want to learn how to calculate the mean, which is summation of x, x. Did you reach on uh, random variables? And the variance. No, we're yeah. doing the mutations and combinations. All right. Was that the last class before the test or what? No, we are still having oh, before the test. All right. Okay. Okay. So these are the formulas we need to look at under discrete variables. I want to look at the assignment question. So the discrete values we have, we have two, four, six, and maybe we have the probabilities. We have 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.5. So how do we find the mean? Multiply uh, the values of x by the probabilities. Then we sum up. Values of x and the probabilities, okay. This and them, that one, 0 0.4. This and them, that one, 1.2. This and them, that one, 3.0. So we're going to get 4.6. That is our mean. So mu simply two times zero point two plus four times zero point three plus six times zero point five. This is going to be four point six. Then you can square the values of x against the probabilities of x and the variance. So here we have what? 4, 16, and 36. The probabilities just maintain them as they are. Make sure that the probabilities add up to one. So x squared, dx, multiply this one by that one, 0 0.8. This one by that one, 4.8. This one, then that one, 18.0. When you add 16, carry one, 
2223.6. This is called summation of x squared px. So to find the variance, it is simply this summation of x squared px minus what? The mean squared. So 23.6 minus 4.6 squared. What do we get? What do you get? Yeah. 2.44. 2.44. If this is a variance, what is our standard deviation? Square root of Very the variance. Four, yes. What do we get? One point five six two. One point uh, five six two. Five two two. Five six two. Five six two. All right. In like manner, can I go to the assignment? Are you still copy? Can proceed. So if we go to the assignment, we have the values of x, which are the numbers of the cards, and the relative frequency, which is equivalent to the what? It's equivalent to the um, probabilities. So x and px. We've been asked to find what? The expected value, which is also called the mean and the standard deviation for the random variable. So you multiply this one times that one, this one times that one, and you add them, we get 1.8. That is how we find the mean. And you square each individual, 0, 1, 4, 9, um, 16, 25. And multiply by the probabilities, you're going to get summation of x squared, x, which is, um, 4.44. So 4.44 minus 1.8 squared, which is a mean, we get 1.2. And this is our variance. When you square root the variance, we will get the standard deviation 1.09545. So you get your three marks there. I'm a question to show what I'm testing. I'm exam. I'm trying to make it harder for you to fail than to pass. Unless you just want to. All right, I'll send um, the videos in the groups. If you're not in the groups, just either join the main group. If you're paid up, join the paid up groups. All right, so I'll end here.